Today, we're gonna to talk about four things that all real estate investors must do for this recession. So there's been lots and lots of discussions here at my company with my partner. And of course, you guys know we've been in business for 21 years and we have a staff of 300. What are the top four priorities? And for us, the first one is evaluate your management. This has been extremely easy for the last few years. Property managers have gotten very soft over the last couple of years because the economy has been so hot. What happens during very good times of high occupancy is people think that property management is easy. So there's a couple things that I want you to be very cognizant of. One is, is your property professionally or are you self-managing? And you have to understand why. If you're self-managing it because you need the money, you really need to take a look at that because professional management companies can bring a lot to the table and they can even save you a tremendous amount of time. But one point of caution here, you really need to understand how to manage a management company. And that is a whole nother skill. As you take a look at your investments or people that have invested with you, you should be looking at these three things. Are you hitting your financial goals and are you being realistic about that? Two, what does 2023 look like realistically? If you're over here on the self-management side and you think that things are gonna be the same as they were in 2022, then you're in big trouble. And the last thing is, is, how much time are you actually spending on the asset itself? Because when things are going up and occupancy is high and everybody's making money, this doesn't seem like much. But now what's happening is rents are flat. We're starting to see concessions and expenses are starting to grow. And that's where professional management comes in. If you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna lose thousands and thousands of dollars. So the second big issue is you need to assess your risk for both your debt and your equity. And a lot of people don't think about their equity. They kind of focus on their debt. But if you think about it, debt is much less riskier than equity and equity is very important. The reason why debt is much less riskier than equity is because if somebody loses a property, for example, and there's a mortgage on it, the equity gets wiped out first, and then the debtor takes over the asset as collateral. So there's all kinds of debt. There's fixed debt, variable debt, bridge debt, and hard money. You guys know these all have variable interest rates. But you need to take a look at the loan maturity date because that is the most important thing. If you have a loan maturity date that's coming up soon, even next year when the Fed is still saying that they're going to raise rates, you could be in big trouble and you need to calculate what that potential new increase in your mortgage payment might be because it's really going to affect your cash flow and you could be in a negative cash flow situation. The second thing is the equity. Now, if you've taken money or raised money through a fund, private equity, Wall Street, which could be a insurance company, it could be a pension fund, it doesn't really matter, a family office or even family and friends, then all of that equity has a maturity date to it. All of this money wants their money back, whether it's in one year, two years, three years, four years, five years, it doesn't really matter. But this money typically is in the form of a down payment and you need to be really cognizant as to when this equity wants their money back. So go back to the terms of your acquisition and pull out that paperwork and take a hard look at this because a lot of these are based on IRRs or internal rates of returns and they have complex waterfalls and you actually might be out of the money right now. Number three is taking a look at the 2022 performance versus the 2023 budget. Now, there'll be a lot of people that will simply just take this and increase this and say 2023 is going to be better naturally, but that, that might not be the case for a lot of people. 2023 is facing headwinds right now on both flat income and higher expenses. So the first thing is you take a realistic view of where you're going to be at the end of 2022, and then that income number, where you are in occupancy, where you are in concession, and where you are on rent, that is the number that starts January of 2023, not some pie in the sky number. And a lot of people miss this. You need to take, because it's just one day later, then you need to mirror up that with what did you project? What did you project for your investors, if you have any? And are you hitting that? If you're not hitting that, you need to take a hard look at how you possibly can. And one of those things might be going out to a third party or a professional management company. Realistic income and expenses for 2023 are gonna be the nemesis for most real estate investors because a lot of these investors do not have a lot of experience and they're simply gonna go back and look at the trends from 2022 and 2021 
and expect that those continue into 2023. So take a hard look at these numbers based on your submarkets and all your expenses and everything that's happening right now. And you might have a very different picture, maybe even less than 2022. As I continue to say, cash reserves are king. You need to have cash reserve to make sure that you're hedging some of these latter income potentially or higher expenses potentially, or the last thing which I have here, debt, which is the biggest variable, which could be a big unknown for many of you, especially if you have variable or bridge kind of debt and you're doing some kind of value add, you've already experienced higher mortgage payments and lower cash flow. And this cash reserve item on your own through self-impounding is going to save your butt for 2023. Number four is cash is king, which I just barely touched on in the last one. But Ross and I, we were originally three months, but now we've gone to six months reserves. And here's how that works. You got your income. We're projecting that income is going to be flat for 2023, largely. And we're also projecting that expenses are going to be anywhere from 7 to 10% increasing depending on the line on it. We're already seeing we had a 26% increase in just our property insurance. We've had increases in property taxes and utilities. And so the expenses are definitely going up, guys. Labor's going up, supplies are going up, materials are going up. So everything's going up and you need to budget for that. The last thing is obviously your debt. If your debt is fixed, you're gold. You have a great, great loan. In fact, I would even say that that loan is now an asset. If you've got a fixed rate loan, it's a three or 4%, that loan is definitely an asset. There are investors that are actually looking to buy property like yours because they can step into that debt payment of three or 4% when interest rates are six, seven, maybe even 8% and inflation's at 7.7. .7. All of this has to do with, do you have a positive or negative cash flow? Because even in my company, on some of the value add projects, where I've had debt escalation, I've had expense escalation, our cash flow is less than we originally projected. Luckily, we've had cash reserves to be able to mitigate some of these issues. As a general rule, let's say your debt service is $25,000 a month right here, and it's affecting your cash flow. Maybe it's gonna to go to 26, 28, 30. You never know with the interest rate. You need to have six months of cash or $150,000 in the bank for this particular asset and this is, trust me guys, is gonna save you guys going into 2023. The Federal Reserve is meeting again on the 13th to the 14th of December. And then they have many meetings through next year. And of course their objective is to get to 2% inflation. We're still over five percentage points away from that. So we believe that debt is gonna to continue to climb. And that's when these cash reserves are gonna save your butt for 2023.